Okay, hey, uh, I'm gonna make another Loracana video. I just made this before, but I was rambling for like 18 minutes. I'm gonna try and cut it down a little bit and make it more clear. Um, this is like why cards cost so much and why I think certain cards are going to be better than others. Um, like already, I have a couple Mickeys uh, because I think it's going to be a really good card and I'll kind of explain why. Um, so the first thing I wanna cover, and I was thinking about all the games I've played and the simplest way to explain it, um, Magic, um, it gets a little complicated, but I'm going to use Hearthstone to, to explain this. Um, so I, I'm just going to call it like the plus one theory, I guess. Um, essentially, in Hearthstone, the cards have um, a cost, and they have like an attack or a power, and health or defense, similar to the cards in uh, Lorcano. And so essentially, let's look at this uh, Chill Wind Yeti with no special abilities, no nothing. Um, I would assume for a 4 cost, he'd be a 4-4, four, four. Um, but he has plus 1 health, so he's a 4-5 a for a 4 cost. So that's why I call it a plus 1. So instead of having 4-4, four and four, um, so like an 8 total of like, we'll just call them points. Uh, instead of 8, it has 9, so it has a plus 1. Um, so that's why it's called the plus 1. So on this card... Uh, for four, we'd think it would be a four four, but it's actually um, a three and a five. So we we do have um, eight, but since every card in this game we're assuming is a plus one, this is missing one uh, point essentially. Four for three five isn't good because we're minus one point. So how do we make that point up? So this card has a special ability called Taunt. So we're saying that Taunt is worth about one point. And so this gets to the, the nine, essentially. A four cost for three, five gets us to eight, plus a Taunt ability for one that gets, gets us to our nine. Chillwind Yeti is four cost. Uh, four, four would get us to eight, but we get our plus one from the health. And a lot of games are like this, like if you play a one, one, or a one cost character, maybe it's one, one. Um, if the game is like a plus one game, then he would have two attack and one defense or vice versa. So I think that Lorcana is the same way. I'm going to try and explain the cost of cards in the same way, where the cost, you should at least have four or four for stats, plus one, and whatever's missing gets tried to be made up some other way. So for Captain Hook, he's a one cost. Um, we would think he'd be a one, one. Um, but this game's a plus one, so we have three. Um, so that right here makes sense. So let's say that's even. How the Chill Wind Yeti and the Shield Master, um, they got their plus one, so we're, we're even there. So these cards we'd say is average. They're not below average, or they're not above average. So this card right now is right where it needs to be. Um, for stats. So th these are good stats. But it also has um, an ability. Challenger plus two when challenging this character gets uh, plus two attack or power. Um, so that seems really good. Uh, it's actually putting him above uh, what you would think the normal cost would be. And then also he has one uh, diamond or I'm calling him lore. Uh, one uh, diamond. So if this ability is worth plus one and this diamond is worth, I'm gonna say plus one, then he would actually be even and then uh, plus two from these two things, which is really good. So for a one cost, this is probably one of the best one costs in the game. I don't think that they're going to be having cards that are like plus five, plus six, you know, like getting plus two is huge for what you're paying. So I'd say this is actually a really, really good uh, card. Um, probably one of the best, and at one cost, it's just awesome. Uh, so let's look at Cruella de Vil. Um, so she's a two cost, so we should see four plus one. We have four here, so she's actually short, um, short minus one from the stats so far. So how Captain Hook, he's right where you want him to be, she's down one already. But she has an ability, when this character is is challenged and banished you may return chosen character to their player's hand um, so you get her back into your hand it's kind of like drawing a card 
um, but it's it's just her. So that should be at least plus one. That gets us even. Um, and then she has her lore or diamond. I don't know how much these are going to be worth, but one right now seems pretty good. It could be more. Um, I, I'm not sure. So she, this just seems like an okay character at plus one. So Hook was plus two. She's plus one. Um, let's look at Elsa. So Elsa, she uh, is a three cost. You would think um, she'd be a three, three, plus one. Um, so she's minus two already um, on her stats. So can we make that up with her ability? Um, this freeze ability, so you exert her. Um, there's a little picture of like a card being tapped. Exert chosen opposing character. So basically cancel her out to cancel out one of their other cards. This could be really big because her cost is kind of low. You could cancel out a six cost, an eight cost, a nine cost possibly. So. Um, that seems pretty good. Is it worth two points? I think definitely. Um, it's definitely uh, makes up for her lower stats, especially since she's going to be exerted anyway. Like these stats really aren't, they don't need to be crazy. Uh, if she was like a three cost for five, five, that'd be really amazing. And you probably wouldn't want to exert her to freeze people anyway. So this just seems like an average card. Um, I think this is worth two points. Uh, exerting her to exert another character. Um, so that would put us uh, even at a good card, plus one here for the diamond. Um, seems like just an average card. It's not like um, anything crazy. Um, Robin Hood. So he's a six cost for four, four, which is a little crazy because uh, based off of like our little um, plus one theory, he should have, he should be six six and six plus one so he is um he's at eight instead of 13 so he's at a minus five actually so can his abilities make up for a minus five uh feed the poor when this character uh when you play this character if an, op an opponent has more cards in their hand than you draw a card so a one time draw one card with a condition um it's not amazing. Uh, I don't know how many cards you're going to be drawing in this game. If it's five every turn, I doubt it. It's probably you start with five to seven cards, and you're drawing one every every turn. So drawing an extra card is going to be good. Um, it's, since there's so many uh, requirements, and it's a one time when he hits the table, um, I wouldn't give it more than one point. So I'd say this Feed the Poor ability is worth one point. Um, Good shot. During your turn, this character has evasive. Um, they can challenge characters with evasive. So this is good. Um, there is a game by Riot, Legends of Runeterra, that kind of has an evasive mechanic, and it's really powerful. Sometimes like a 1-1 one, one or a 2-2 two, two evasive character like chips away a ton of damage. Um, it can, so that can be really that can be really good. Evasive's powerful. I'd maybe give it a. Um, probably two right now uh, for knocking out evasive characters. Someone could have like five really weak evasive characters just coming at you. This can kind of help pick those away. So it seems good. It's worth at least two. Um, and then two, this has two lore. We've seen one on everyone else. Um, so that, yeah, it could be really good. It could be just, um, you know, average. I'm not sure what these lore do yet. Um, but we'll figure that out soon. So if we get one here, uh, two for good shot, and two lore, that puts us at five, but we were down, what were we down? Eight, four, five. So this is just an average card, I guess. It, it breaks even for the cost, because it has some good abilities. Six seems like a lot, like you'll probably not drop too many six costs, maybe four or five, um, it just depends. Uh, based off of the other costs I've seen. So, I don't know. Robin Hood seems good. It's not busted for sure. Um, and it's breaking even for the points. Um, Stitch. This one I really like, actually. So, we have six here. It's a three, five. That puts us at eight. So, we're short. Same as Robin Hood, we're short five. Because stats, um, there's four missing. And then this is a plus one plus one theory or whatever, so he should have um, more stats. Uh, five points worth of things. Let's see if we can make it up. 
And right away, shift, you may pay four to play this on top of one of your Stitch characters. So we get a two reduced off of this. If I saw this was a four cost, um, and then stats, you're, you're even because you're eight um, plus one. So you're, you're minus one, but we have all these abilities and stars. This would be a really, really good card. So playing this for four um, is awesome. It makes it a great card. We have to consider that the um, Stitch character below, like the pre-evolution or whatever it's called, um, it does have a cost. If there's a Stitch for zero, one, or two, you know, then it's good. If you're playing it on top of a three or a four or five cost Stitch, it's not probably as good. Um, but if there's like cheap Stitches you can evolve off of, that's really good. Um, so I, I mean, that's it's worth at least a plus two, uh, depending on the cheapest stitch we have. If there's no stitch lower than uh, three, then it's not as good. But this is a good ability. Um, Adoring Fans. So this is huge, actually. Whenever you play a character with two or less, with cost two or less, you may exert it to draw a card. So for example, let's just say, even though Cruella isn't in the same guild as Stitch, she's in this green guild, um, you play her for two, exert her um, as soon as she hits the table, pay her two, she hits the table, exert, draw a card. If she gets banished, she can come back into your hand and just keep doing it. So it's kind of like um, you get, can get a lot of draws. And this is whenever you play a character with two or less. So if you had like three Captain Hooks or something like that, you're going to get three draws off of that. Um, that's really big. Um, I think drawing, in any game, drawing is really important, and uh, the ability to like go wide and draw a ton of cards uh, off this Rockstar Stitch could be huge. So this is a really good card. Um, on top of that, he has three lore, three diamonds. Um, you know, all the others have like one or two we've seen so far. Robin Hood has two for a six cost also. So like having a lot here is going to be big. If, uh, hypothetically, these aren't just worth one point, they're worth two. We have, like, six here. That makes up for our missing stats on its own. Drawing tons of cards, that's, like, a two or a three, probably. So this is, like, really good card. I think everyone is going to wish they had this. Especially for, like, if you like building fun decks, this stitch seems really good. Um, this Mickey, I really like. Um, eight cost, super expensive. Uh, 10, um, 10 off the stats, so we would, you know, ideally see an 8 and 8, so that's 16. Um, so we're 6 short plus our 1, 7 short. So can this Mickey make up for 7 points of missing stats? Um, evasive, we know evasive uh, is going to be good, <laughs> especially there's only 2 cards that have any evasive uh, interactions. They're in different guilds. Um, Killing evasive characters may be really tough. This may be hard to get off the board. Um, hypothetically, a 4-4 Robin Hood can't take uh, Mickey out on his own. Um, so you're going to need something big <laughs> to uh, get rid of this that has evasive. Or give evasive to another big card. Um, and then it has... Uh, the fact that it has four lore, these four diamonds, I think is huge. Um, in my opinion, there's not going to be a lot of cards with four. I'm, my guess is four is the max, just based off of kind of the artwork. I don't think we can fit a fifth in here. I think four is the highest. I think it's important. I think it's really important. That's why I, I would say pick this card up first, and then maybe Stitch next, maybe Maleficent. Captain Hooks are really good. Um, you know, all these cards seem, like, good, but I feel like this... Mickey is going to be the best just based off of this four lore or whatever. Um, they put a lot of... Uh, hypothetically, if evasive is worth two, and we need... We have 17 points, we have 12, five points. So these are worth more than a po one point, uh, according to this. Maybe it's one and a half, maybe it's two. If it's two, this is like a 20-point card um, compared to for eight. So eight costs for 20 points, um, as opposed to, like, um, who's the closest? 
this Robin Hood. A, a six cost for eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So six for 15. Um, I don't know. I just think these are going to be worth a lot. Having four lore or whatever is good. Um, this Maleficent, the nine drop. You're not going to be dropping a lot of nine cost cards, I'm guessing. One or two, maybe one. Um, is this one good? Well, we need 18 points worth of resources. We are at 12, so we have a lot to make up. Also, six points plus one. That's seven. Same as Mickey. Uh, same as, yeah, a lot of them. Uh, can he, or she, Maleficent, I guess, um, with their ability and the Lord. Dragonfire, when you play this character, you may banish chosen opposing character. I think that's huge. Just drop this on the table and delete anything that's the op opposing person has. Get rid of their Mickey, get rid of their Robin Hood, their evasive character that's just picking away at you, their Elsa that's freezing every time, like... Um, I can see why this costs 9. I think it's just... Um, it's so expensive that it's probably not super busted. I don't think there's going to be a lot of cards that are um, better than this. Is this worth... What did I say? 18, 12, 7, or minus 7. Is this worth 5 points? It... it it kind of is, because if, if you drop it on the right target, it can be worth five. It seems like, I would say this is average. It's not it's not broken. It's not above average, like probably the Mickey and Stitch. Probably like the Captain Hook for one. Um, I will, next, I'll do a short little like ranking video. I guess I haven't decided um, the ranking, but I'm going to rank these seven cards. Um, hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully it wasn't too confusing, but... Um, this is just kind of a standard way to test power level of certain cards. Um, and as more cards come out, it might change a lot. But um, yeah, let me know what you think. Are you picking up Mickey's? What's your favorite card? Uh, what do you think is the, the best? Tell me, tell me in this, and I'll, we'll look at the next one and look at some comments. But all right, we'll bug you guys later.